Hi. Are you freezing? Are you freezing? <laughs> it's cold, huh? Well, friends, welcome back to the off-grid cabin. So this summer, me and Rachel spent some time with you guys right over there by the campfire, talking and dreaming kind of about spending a little bit more time at the cabin. Our, most of the times our trips, well, let me back up a little bit in case you're new here. So our homestead, where you see us most of the time is in Southeast Michigan. Where we are today is at our off-grid cabin, which is in Northwest Michigan. And by off-grid, we're totally off-grid. We have no running water, no septic system, no power, and pretty much not a whole lot of even cell phone coverage here. So we get by with things the way that they are in that I can check things on my phone. I can check YouTube comments. I can send text messages. Um, sometimes if you try to send them with a picture, it's not going to happen and it seems to be pretty weather dependent as well so we would get by with it for the most part we basically we come here to disconnect and relax from the world but our brains got to thinking about the new way the new world that we live in now with covid a lot of people's jobs have changed ours being some of those jobs in fact rachel basically works 100 percent remote now so she basically hasn't gone to the office in so almost two years pretty soon yeah, I think so. I think she went one time to clean out her desk. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, I'm probably like a 90 to 95% work from home person. And we were thinking, you know, it's going to be a few years until we actually can retire and come and spend even more time here. But in the meantime, our normal trips when we come up here to the cabin are usually a four-day weekend. We'll take Thursday, Friday off. We'll come up Thursday. We head home Sunday. What if we tried to stretch that out a little bit? You know, what if we could work from home, work from the cabin, <laughs> you know, Monday, Tuesday. Now we get like a four, five, six day weekend away. It could be pretty nice. So I feel like we have a pretty good setup now for our power, our power system. We have a pretty decent solar setup. I think we can go five or six days based on our current usage with clouds like we have today. We also have a gas generator that we could break out if we really needed to. But like that missing component of being able to work from here. In fact, last time I was here, I had to work. Somebody called me from work and I had to remote into work and send an email. And just to perform that task, literally took me like 15 minutes just to get logged in. Our internet is that slow. <laughs> And so to be able to actually like join a Teams meeting or a Zoom call or something like that on our laptop from here at the cabin is basically impossible. I, in fact, I've never even tried because I know it, it absolutely will not work. In fact, last night I was, I was talking to Rachel and she was like, yeah, we're getting ready to watch the new, uh, what is it? The new Hawkeye series on Disney Plus down with our with our son and daughter-in-law and the new grandbaby down in South Carolina. She's like, it's really good, you should check it out. So I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, maybe tonight, because it gets dark at like 5.30 now. And I was thinking to myself, hmm, yeah, let's give it a shot. It doesn't work. <laughs> I got like 15 minutes into it, and basically every 60 seconds, it would pause for 10 seconds. And I was like, yeah, I can't do this. So. So there is a company called HiBoost, it's H-I-B-O-O-S-T, and they reached out to us recently and wanted to send us one of their cell phone boosters to try out. I'm not sure if they watched our video from the cabin from this summer or what, or how they got kind of linked up with us, but um, they did send us like a coupon code and stuff to share with you guys. But I've always personally been kind of skeptical of these things. I don't know if they really work 
which is part of the reason I'm not even permanently mounting this thing yet. I'm not gonna go through the hassle of, you know, climbing up on the roof and mounting this antenna, drilling holes, running some wires through my attic and stuff like that if it's not even gonna work. So I'm going with a temporary setup today. We're gonna test it. We're gonna see how it works out. And it's not just something like for, for off-grid people like us. You know, we are off-grid, but we are very, very remote. And a lot of you homesteaders are kind of in the same boat, you know. You want to move out in the country where you can raise chickens and goats and have a couple, you know, whatever you want to raise on your homestead. A lot of times that's pretty rural. And so internet connections and cell phone connections can be hard to come by. So if this does work, um, it'd be pretty cool for us here at the cabin and, and maybe cool for you guys. Since they did give us a coupon code to share with you guys. So this is kind of how my setup's going to work temporarily. And then if it actually works, we'll come back in the spring and uh, mount it up permanently on the roof and run the wires properly. Now we kind of go, I'm going to be tripping over this wire all weekend, I think. So I've kind of explained the reasoning behind my temporary install because I don't know if this thing's even going to work. So the reason behind the PVC pole, I wanted to get it up high but you see how I can rotate it like this? It's very important for this thing to even have a chance of working. This antenna has to be pointed directly at your nearest cell phone tower. I used a website called cellmapper.net. You basically put in, you know, who's your carrier, ours is Verizon, what's your zip code, it brings up a map. And it'll show you where all the towers are, kind of how their coverage works. And from what I can tell, ours is like north, northeast. So somewhere in that range there, but we'll, uh, once we get the amplifier hooked up inside, we'll come out and we'll fine tune this thing because you can actually kind of see the levels of how this thing is actually receiving that signal. So definitely be super, super careful with this wire. You don't want to pinch it or kink it or anything like that because it's a it's a very low impedance fire so it can get damaged really easily so much much warmer this is our spare bedroom at the cabin so where our kids normally stay when they come up with us and it is in the complete opposite corner diagonally from where we installed that outdoor antenna and i did that for a reason because so this is the indoor amplifier and then this is the indoor antenna which also comes with another 50 feet or so of cord so that you can route and mount things properly. This, these units need to be at least 20 feet away from that other device. Or if they're not, they need to be kind of in opposing direction. So if your outdoor antenna points this way, you want your indoor antenna pointing kind of the opposite way. So you don't get like, um, uh, you know how microphones can get that weird feedback and it makes that ringing sound that hurts your ears. This thing can do that to itself. So that's kind of the reasoning behind that. Let's see if we can get things powered up here. A lot of green lights. Green lights are good. <laughs> I work in IT, so green lights, definitely good. So on this little screen here, it's probably definitely not gonna show up on camera, so I'm not even gonna try. I will definitely take some pictures of it so I can show you kind of um, with, with some B-roll of, of what's going on here. So it lists four different bands, LTE 700, cell 800, PCS. Different bands are for different cell phone carriers. So LTE 700, for example, that's Verizon. So whatever cell phone carrier you're using, look in the instruction book and it's going to tell you, you know, Metro PCS uses this band and that's the band that you're going to want to try to focus on. And so then it lists like signal strength for both upload, download and power. For, for each one of those bands. And what we need to do next is adjust that outdoor antenna. I just kind of guessed and pointed it in, in a guessing direction. But we need to fine tune that. And if you have two people, one person can sit in here with this and, and look at the numbers as the person outside kind of adjusts the antenna until you get it just right. Or you can use an app on your phone that will connect to this either with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi if you're connecting it to your Wi-Fi connection. So the unit we're testing today is the High Boost 4K. It's designed for like a 4,000 square foot house. 
I think our cabin is like 800 square feet. So I think it's a little bit overkill. They make like a 10K unit and a 15K unit that for like 10,000 square feet that have like, I think they have multiple indoor antennas. But since I'm only one person, I can't look at the screen and adjust that antenna at the same time. So they do make an app that goes on your phone. And I was worried when I, when I went downloaded this app, I was worried because it had like multiple one star reviews. And everyone was complaining that they couldn't register to create an account. And I had zero problems with it. I, I created my account at home. So it was kind of ready when I got here. See, add device, scan for Bluetooth. That must be it. Yes. I'm trying to record my screen here so I can show you guys what, what I'm seeing here on my end. Failed. Please try again. <laughs> oh, no. Failed. Please try again. Well, friends, I just spent about 45 minutes on the phone with the tech support guy. It was very helpful because my Bluetooth connection on my phone for that app, I could not get it to connect. And we tried everything. And he thinks what it is, is the fact that I have a Pixel 6 Pro brand new phone running Android 12 and the Bluetooth on this does not like the Bluetooth on my phone. Apparently it's a known issue with the Samsung S21 5G, which is a brand new phone, also has the same issue. And so I had to just skip the app portion and I brought the amplifier back out here with my power unit so I can power it up. And I'm just trying to tweak and adjust my antenna without using the app on my phone. The little screen here basically shows you the same thing my phone would show. So I'm just making like minor, minor tweaks to the direction of this and also the, the vertical angle. I'm finding that by angling it up gives me a little bit better, better signal strength. Right now I'm getting on, on the power meter, I'm getting negative, negative 10 to negative nine, negative eight I've seen a couple times. And the closer you can get that back towards zero or even up in the positive range, the better performance you're gonna get out of this. All right, negative eight, that's, well, then it jumps to negative nine. That's about as good as I can get it. I think I can probably improve things and get it a little closer to zero if I mount it up on the peak of my roof, which I'm not gonna do today. So we'll test it like this and we'll see what we're getting out of her. Here we go, back inside where it's warm. I'm still getting, it's bouncing between minus eight and minus nine, which he's, the guy that I was talking to says, if you can get it up so negative being way on this end of the scale, positive being on this end of the scale. If you can get it close to like negative five, the closer you can get to zero, even if you can get to a positive number, your performance is gonna be absolutely amazing. He said, but based on how remote I am, negative eight, negative nine is probably gonna be decent for me. Let's do some speed tests and see how things pan out there. I did some last night before any of this was hooked up. So we have something to compare to. So let me look and see what I what I did last night. So we, we have a good comparison here. So the plane up Google speed test. You just go to Google and you type in the word speed test. That one last night, it looks like, what was the overall result here? So right around two megabit download and two megabit upload. So let's redo that one now. Four point four megabit down, so more than you know, right on almost exactly double my download speed and my upload speed. 
2.96, so that went up by about one megabit. So I doubled my download speed. That was good. And let's also try fast.com. I did one of those yesterday as well. And last night when I did this, I got like 690 kilobits per second, so not even one megabit. Fast.com test. 1.8, 2.1, Yeah, that's way faster than what I was getting. 1.9, so I had 600K yesterday, and this is 1.9 megabit. So three times the speed from fast.com. Fast.com is a website you can go to to test your speed, and I'm pretty sure it uses like the Netflix servers to do the test. So it, it's a pretty reliable way to do it. So, so yeah, using the Google speed test, I got at least twice the upload and download speed. And with fast.com, I got three times the download speed. I'm pretty sure I was telling you guys earlier in this video about trying to watch that new Hawkeye movie on Disney Plus last night. And I couldn't, I couldn't watch it. Rachel's been watching it. She told me it was good. And every time I tried to play it last night when I was sitting here in the dark, it would like play for a while and then pause and buffer for like 10 seconds, play for another minute, buffer for 10 seconds. And this, uh, this seems like it's, oh look, <laughs> my camera focused on that lady's face instead of my face. I'll let this sit here and run and see if it buffers any. The installation, I think it's, I don't really don't think it's that bad now. Yeah, you're gonna have to mount an antenna somewhere outside, run a cable into your house, plug this thing into a wall, plug the antenna into that, and then mount your indoor antenna somewhere. But you could probably do this in, it took me like three hours to do this because I've been filming it, but I probably could have completed the whole thing if I wasn't filming in like probably under an hour. Granted, I did do a temporary install. Ultimately, what I do wanna do is in the spring when we come back, I'm gonna mount it up on the peak of of our roof line so that we're up as high as possible and then i'll run this wire down in through my attic i'll come down over here and probably mount the little box here probably on a plug strip so i can turn it on and off so it's just not always on all the time although from a power consumption standpoint my blue eddy is basically registering like zero watts it thinks this is using such little power that it's just registering as zero so I think I have one of those little kilowatt meters in my truck. I'll, I'll grab that and plug that in just to get a good accurate representation of how much power this uses. I don't think it's buffered once. So I guess I get to watch Hawkeye tonight once it gets dark. The um, I think overall I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm going to continue to play with it this weekend. I'm going to just leave these cords draped everywhere the way they are so I can do some more testing with this. Still rolling along just fine. So, cell phone boosters. At the very beginning of this video, I told you guys I was a bit of a skeptic, and I think it pretty much proved me wrong. They they actually do work. Both my download, download was like three times, and my upload is at least double. So, is it amazing performance? Am I going to be able to, like break out my work laptop and join a Teams call or, or a Zoom meeting? I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to play around with that a little bit more. You know, four or five megabit down is not blazing speed, especially over cellular. So time will tell on that one. Um, although when I do mount the antenna permanently up on the peak of the roof, I think that may help my performance a little more. So if you live in a, a remote location like our off-grid cabin here, or maybe you live just out in the boonies and you get terrible cell phone coverage or you have a, a house that just seems to block your signal for some reason. We had that problem when we lived in the, our last house that was in the city. It was one of those duplex houses. So like half of your house was above ground and the other half was down. Or if you were like down in the living room, good luck trying to make a phone call. This would actually work to solve that problem because you're taking the outdoor signal and piping it right indoors, right where you, right where you need it. So I will leave a link to their website along with the, the coupons that they sent over if you guys want to check them out if it's something you're interested in. 
So I'm going to clean up my mess here and make myself some dinner and I will uh, see you guys on the next video.